Hey guys, and welcome to this review on the Canon RF 50mm f1.8. This is a real world review, and hopefully you will get something from this if you're looking to buy the lens. Now this lens opens the door for people wanting to get into the full frame camera market with Canon mirrorless cameras, and it's a great little prime lens for a small price really of $200 US or £220 UK. This is the RF version of Canon's most popular selling EF Nifty 50, but with a few extras added in. You've got the seven aperture blades and a wide open aperture of f1.8. It's really not surprising this lens has been long awaited and is sure to sell like hotcakes. One of the main differences between the RF 50mm f1.8 and the EF version is the fact it's a native lens for Canon's mirrorless cameras and doesn't require you to purchase the EF to RF lens adapter. This means it fits nice and snugly onto your mirrorless camera, giving you a nice little tidy setup. You also get a minimum focus distance of 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters, enabling you to take up some nice close range photos. And this is a really welcome addition to the lens. Now I did mention this is a real world review of the Canon RF 1.8 so i'm going to take you with me when i take this lens out so to see how it really performs in normal situations none of the photos today will be processed so that you can see exactly how the pictures look straight from the lens and the camera the rf f1.8 has an stm autofocus which is quite quick but not the fastest and it works very well and reliably it is though a little bit noisy at times, but it's only worth thinking about this if you're considering this lens for maybe video shooting. Now the lens is very light when it's on the camera and it feels almost identical actually in the hand compared with the EF version. But you do save on a little bit of that weight, remember, by not using the added adapter. Now I'm out today just using this lens in what I call normal conditions. And I'm actually out in a small but very busy village in the Cotswolds in England. The shooting conditions are actually quite difficult today because it's very sunny, creating the harsh highlights and of course those dark shadows. But so far, the lens I think is doing a great little job of taking care of it. Now what I'm very impressed with on this lens is that it actually replicates the colour that you see with your eyes very much the same and you find that you get this nice kind of contrasty colour and effect when you're taking pictures with the lens as you can see here. Today I'm literally just taking snaps and candid photos and not really looking for those expert pictures which I put in a portfolio or anything like that, just looking to actually test this lens out in normal conditions and really see if it works nice for the kind of people which are probably looking to buy it. I'm actually going to make a full video on the comparison between the RF 50mm f1.8 and that of the EF 50mm f1.8 because I know some of you will be wondering why it is that you should perhaps pay an extra £100 or $100 for the RF version when you have the EF version. But let me say, there are a few differences between the two lenses and in my opinion some definite advantages of using the RF version as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can check out that video, which will be coming in the next two to three days time. I've got to say using this lens is actually a really pleasant experience. And you can see from the photos, it does a really nice job. I decided here just to take a picture of this couple on a bench. It's quite funny because every time I went to take a picture, either my dad would walk across the screen or a car would come over the bridge, as you'll see in a minute. Um, yeah, it just didn't seem to be happening. But eventually, when I changed the angle and perspective and the passersby had gone, I managed to get a photo that I was looking for. And you'll see that whatever you focus on in the image is really nice and sharp and you get that beautiful, bright, contrasty colour that I mentioned earlier. 
At this point, I decided it was time to run back to the car. And if you're wondering why I would do such a thing on a beautiful day like this, well, you're just about to see. I was absolutely mortified to find out that I'd been walking around for nearly an hour and a half with a big tear in the back of my shorts. Absolutely mortified. I decided to go home and take a few more photos anyway on the camera with the lens. When you're shooting in direct sunlight, if you're shooting towards the sun, you will notice some quite visible um, flare from uh, the sun which comes through on the lens. Now, this is not a big deal, but it's something which is worth knowing about. Now, of course, having f1.8 aperture, you're gonna get some really lovely bokeh as you can see here. And then if you shoot at f2.8, you find that you go from the oval shape to that more round shape, but it's actually still a really nice, pleasant looking bokeh. Even at f4, you're able to get that effect as well. Now the sharpness of this lens is obviously gonna be in question because of the price, but let me put you at ease. When we zoom in here at wide open f1.8, you can see the center of the frame is really sharp. And even when you go to the edges, even though there is a little bit of softness, which is present, it's still doing a really good job and I'm actually quite surprised. Now when we compare this against f2.8, you can see that your edges are sharper when you've got that aperture that you're using. And even when you push this up to f4, it goes even sharper again. And you can see that it's really sharp in the middle of the frame. Now I've noticed a big difference here between f4 and f1.8 in the edges, and it's definitely considerably sharper throughout the whole frame at f4. This is f5.6 in the center of the frame, and I've noticed that using this lens, you actually get the best results when you're shooting from f4 through to f11 but you still get very good uh, shooting conditions, even wide open as well. Now F16, there is a little bit of softness present in the middle and the edges, but nothing too much to worry about. And probably F22 is the softest of all the apertures. And it's something you're probably not gonna be using too much anyway, but you can still see the edges are pretty sharp. When shooting wide open an aperture at F1.8, you do, sometimes see vignetting and it's no surprise to see heavy vignetting in the edges with this lens that does disappear quite a bit at f2.8 as you can see and the edges become lighter when you go up to f4 you don't actually really experience much vignetting if any at all but this is the kind of thing that you see in a lot of lenses wide open so it's nothing to really worry about now, just like on all of the RF lenses that you get with Canon, you have this focus ring at the end, which you can actually customize and put a setting like ISO or something and change it with. But you can only do this when you're in autofocus mode. Otherwise, this is your focus ring in manual mode. Now, this RF 50mm f1.8 is a fantastic little prime lens, which produces vibrant and sharp images, and it produces that nice Canon color. So I would recommend this to anyone looking for a cheap 50 millimeter prime lens that is shooting Canon cameras. I wanna thank you guys for watching the video today. Give it a thumbs up or any comments you might have, drop them in the comments section. If you're new here or you've been around for a while, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you join the channel here at Ben's Guide. And whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, just make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.